In this video, we're going to give you a brief overview of the process involved in doing the layout and toolpaths for the open sign that you can see on the screen. There's a companion tutorial to this that covers the same process, but in much more detail and with much fuller explanations of each stage. So I would recommend at the end of this that you may watch that if you're interested in learning more about exactly how to reproduce this yourself. Let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software our first task is to define our workspace in the software, which needs to be a little bit larger than the final part that we actually plan to cut on the machine. I'm going to come down and click on the icon to create a new file. And for this job, I'm going to set my um, workspace to be 15 inches wide, that's the X value, 10 inches high, that's the Y value, and 0.5 inches thick, and that's the Z value. I'm also going to tell the software we're working with Z0 off the top of the block, and for the purposes of drawing my vectors, I'm going to set my date and position, or the x0, y0 position, to the centre. Working in inches, can come down and hit OK, and we're ready to draw our first two shapes, which in this case will represent the oval border for our plaque. I'm going to come up and click on the icon to draw ellipse under create vectors. So we'll anchor our oval shapes in the middle of the job at x0, y0. I'm going to type in a width. And the first one is going to be 12 wide and is going to have a height of 7.5 inches. And I'm going to hit create. And then the second one is going to be 13 inches wide and 8.5 inches high. And again, I'm going to hit the create button in order to draw that. When we can see those and we're happy with them, I can hit close. Next, we're going to import a piece of two-dimensional clip art for our open graphic. This has kindly been supplied by VectorArt.com. I'm going to click on the icon to import vectors from a file. You can see in the project folder we have an EPS file, which is a vector format called OpenSign. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Open button. And this is always going to be imported in the position it was drawn in the original software that it was designed in. And we can see in this case that means it's been brought into our job slightly off the edge of the material. What I'm going to do while this is still selected is come over and click on the icon here to align this to the middle of our part. Let's just close that now. And next I'm going to resize that. So I come up, click on the icon to set the size. I'm going to set the width of that to 9 inches. I'm going to let the software automatically link the other axis, the Y value for this, and scale that proportionately. Come down and hit the Apply button, and then we can hit Close. The final vectors that I need for my design are going to be the two holes that we'll drill for mounting our plaque. Come over and click on the Draw Circle icon. And I'm going to set the diameter to be a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to click in the approximate position I would like the circle and then just go ahead and edit that to be exactly where I want it which in this case is going to be at negative 6.25 in X and 0 in Y so if I hit apply I know that's in the middle of the border here and the second one I'm going to click over here and then I'm going to enter a value of positive X 6.25 and again Y 0 and hit apply and close and there we've completed the vector layout for our design. We're now ready to start calculating toolpaths so I'm going to click on the icon here that will minimize the drawing tab and open up the toolpaths tab over on the right of our interface. First job before we calculate any of these is to double check our material setup. So I'm going to click on the set button I've got Z0 off the top of my material, thickness of half inch, which I'm happy with. Currently, my X0, Y0 position is set in the middle of the job. Now, that's perfectly acceptable and really just a personal choice. But in this case, because we're going to be machining away the middle of the job, it would probably make more sense for me to have it in the lower left-hand corner in an area where we're not actually going to be calculating any toolpaths. That way I can always ensure that I've got some material left if I need to re-zero um, the Z-axis when I change one of the tools. So now it's just a case of double checking that my rapid gaps and home position are reasonable and safe. We can hit the OK button. And the first toolpath I want to calculate is going to be what we refer to as a flat bottom V-carve toolpath between the open letters and my inside oval border. So I'm going to click in the bottom right hand corner and drag up here to select the open letters. Hold the shift key down and click on the oval to add that to the selection. Come over to the VCarve toolpath icon. 
and in here I'm going to start at the top of the material at zero but I'm going to specify that we want to truncate this V carving and have a flat bottom in it and the flat depth we're going to enter is going to be a quarter of an inch or 0.25 I'm going to keep the 90 degree half inch V bit that I've got selected here to do the V carving but I'm also going to check this box here to add another tool which is going to clear out this flat area in between what is effectively going to be beveled edges. I'm going to click on the select button and from the tool database I'm going to choose the quarter inch end mill 0.25 inch end mill and I'm just going to take the default values for that. I'm going to come down and we'll just change the name here uh, to VCarve, go ahead and hit the calculate button and there we can see the software has calculated that toolpath it's automatically opened the 3D view and the preview toolpath dialog here I just need to select the material that I'd like to shade my virtual block in choose the appropriate toolpath so in this case I'll start with the first toolpath that was calculated which is for the end mill so this is the one that's going to clear out the flat area and click on the button to preview selected toolpath so we can see what that quarter inch tool is going to cut. If we want to help visualize this, we could give that a color. So I'm going to come down and choose the dark red color. So there we can see what's being machined by that tool. Then the V-carve toolpath, which was calculated at the same time, if we preview that, we can see that that is going to come in and add the sharpness around the edges of my lettering and also machine away any areas that were too small for that larger area clearance tool to fit into. Again for the purposes of visualization I could also change that colors uh, or that toolpath preview color to dark red. So there we can see the result of those first two toolpaths the end mill and the v-bit. I can close the preview toolpath form for the next toolpath, I'd like to profile around the outside of the border with a V-bit to add a beveled edge to that. In order to select the correct vector, I need to be able to see the 2D view, but it would also be nice to be able to see the 3D view at the same time. So I'm going to click on the View drop down here, choose the option to Tile Windows Vertical. Now I can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. I'm going to select this outer border vector here. That will deselect everything else. I just clicked on that to select it. Come over and click on the profile toolpath. And in here, I'm going to specify a cut depth of 0.2 inches. Start depth is going to be zero on the top surface of the material. I'm going to click on select and I'm going to choose the 90 degree half inch V bit from the tool database and hit OK. I want to cut outside these vectors and we'll just call that profile bevel and hit calculate. Now if I want I can choose the button to preview the selected toolpath and we can see what that's going to machine into our part. I can maximize the 3D view if I want and we could also add a color to that as well if we like so perhaps we'll choose the dark blue color in this case. So we can see the bevel being cut around the outside edge there with the v-bit and that's just following a simple line around there in order to scribe that out. Now we can close the preview toolpass form. Let's come back up to the view drop down menu, click on the option to tile windows vertically again and now what I'd like to do is create the mounting points for our sign. So I'm going to click on this circle here, hold shift down and select the other circle, come up to the drilling icon and in here I don't want to drill all the way through the part, I just want to create the locations that I'm going to be able to screw through in order to hold this onto the wall. So I'm just going to go 3 eighths of an inch deep. So starting at zero, drilling down to 3 eighths of an inch. You can see we already have the drill selected from the tool database. That's a quarter inch drill which is the size of hole I'd like to make. And I'm just going to change the name to drill holes, hit calculate and preview that toolpath. Again, we can maximize the 3D view to look at the result of that here. Close the preview menu again, come up to view, tile the windows vertically once more. And now to finish, I want to create a cutout toolpath around the outside of our plaque. So I'm going to select my oval here, I'm going to come over, click on the profile toolpath icon again. This time I want to cut all the way through my material. 
and I'm going to imagine in this case that I have a sacrificial sheet of material on the bed of my machine that I don't mind cutting into a little bit to ensure that I've cut all the way through the part. So I'm actually going to set the depth of cut to be a little bit more than the thickness of material that I have specified. I'm going to come down and select from the tool database the quarter inch M mill to do my cutout pass and hit OK. I want to cut outside around the vector here just like we did when we added the chamfer however if I cut exactly on that vector I'm going to machine away the chamfer because we know this oval follows the inside edge of this cut here so what I'm actually going to do is tell the software to make the part we're cutting out a little bit bigger we're going to offset it by an additional 0.15 of an inch so that will um, leave us 0.15 horizontally of the chamfer that we created there Next, I'm also going to imagine that I don't have a good way to hold this part down and so I want to leave it attached to the stock material that we're cutting it out of. And we're going to do that by adding little tabs that won't be cut through when this profiles around. So I'm going to click on the square here to check to add tabs to the toolpath. We can specify the length of our tab, the thickness of our tab, and then go ahead and click on the button here to edit the positions of the tabs. And in this case, I'm just going to say I want to add four of these. Click on the button to add tabs, and we can see in the 2D view they've appeared as these little yellow squares with a T in them. It's possible for me to delete these, add additional ones, or even just click and move them to a new position. And as you'll see in a moment when we calculate the toolpath, these will be respected by the tool lifting up and leaving a small piece of material that will keep our part that we're cutting out attached to the stock. I'm going to hit close here on my toolpath tabs form. I'm going to go ahead, change the name of this to profile cutout, and click on the calculate button. The software will give me a message of, uh, which is warning me that I've set the value for the cut depth to be thicker than the material. So it's telling me, are you sure that you want to calculate this toolpath because it is going to cut into the bed of the machine? And I would only want to do this if I had a sacrificial sheet on my machine bed. If I hit cancel, I could go ahead and correct it or change that value here because I am assuming that I've got this sacrificial sheet. I just hit OK. So the software goes ahead and calculates that toolpath for me. You can maximize the 3D view now. Click on the button here to preview selected toolpath. And there we can see that that's machined around. It's gone out that distance that we specified for the allowance offset, leaving our chamfer on there or some of our chamfer on there. And also you can see here at the positions that we asked the software to add those tabs is left some bits of material that the profile cut is going to lift up over and down so that the part will stay attached once it's cut out and these would just be removed manually after you'd finished cutting. Now if we're happy with the way the part looks we can hit close and we'd be able to work our way through the list selecting them in the order that we wanted to cut them on the machine and clicking on the icon here to save the toolpath choose an appropriate post processor from the list that's relevant for your particular machine type or the control software you use hit the save toolpath button give that a name and that would be ready to take over to your CNC and actually load the tool and run it let's go ahead and just hit close on the save toolpath form there so that concludes our overview of this example. You've seen there how we've able to draw some vectors within the software, import data and position it within those vectors, and then we've created a fairly complex set of toolpaths here using a combination of things like the flat bottom V-carve, profiling to chamfer around the outside edge, drilling, and then finally a profile cut where we went ahead and also added some tabs to hold the part in place when it was cut out. As previously mentioned, there is another version of this particular tutorial that covers the same example in much more detail with deeper explanations of each of the aspects as we work through it. So if you're interested in reproducing this, we'd recommend that you go ahead and work through that tutorial in order to create your own version of this file. And that concludes this example.